Hi and welcome everyone. This is Jenna from Aguire. So every once in a while a product comes out that I get really excited about and I just want to do a video showcasing some cards that I created with that product. And so this isn't really a technique video, but rather a showcase of a bunch of cards. However, I do share some tips for using stencils effectively and quickly on multiple cards and some other tips. I have loads of examples for you, so I hope that demonstrates the versatility of this product. Okay, so the product that I'm featuring today is from The Greetery, and it is their Pinwell Party Products. That's a mouthful. There are a few different products in this line. You can buy a bundle if you wanted to. I uh, purchased this as soon as I saw it online because I thought it was brilliant, and I've been really excited to use it. First in this little collection is the Pinwheel Party Stencils. There are a few stencils in here, and you can see engraved on the stencil is an outline for a horizontal or vertical card. Now there are four stencils here that you layer together, and there's a little code on the bottom, A1, A2, a, uh, B1, B2. And you can see how you do the first stencil and ink over it, then the second stencil and ink over it. And you do that with all four stencils and you build this scene that is just so much fun. I will show you how to do this and actually I'll show you how to do this for mass producing a bunch of cards, which is what I did today. That just is my jam. And um, I'll share some tips for using stencils, especially layering stencils quickly and effectively. In this set, there are a few other additional stencils, including this one and a border stencil, and I'll show you more of those in a moment. Right now, I'm going to focus on those four layering stencils. I have a bunch of white cardstock here cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. This is Nina Classic Crest Solar White and 110 pound. You can use any cardstock you want. I just like this one because it's smooth for blending. Now since I'm going to be inking up lots of cardstock of the same size, I'm going to create a placeholder for my cardstock. So each time I can ink the cardstock, remove it, and put another piece in to ink very quickly. So I'm putting three pieces of scrap paper around the edges there, the sides and the top of my white cardstock. Each time I can slide my cardstock in there and it'll be positioned perfectly. I am using quite a bit of purple tape here. I didn't really need to use that much, but I will reuse that again in this video. Okay, I'm coming in with my first stencil. There are etched guidelines, and I line that up with my cardstock, with the white piece of cardstock. Then I put a piece of tape at the top to create a hinge. I will now take a piece of tape and put it sticky side up underneath the area where my white cardstock will be. This will help to hold it in place so it doesn't move around. I will use my anti-static powder tool on that exposed sticky there so it's not too sticky. I want it to be able to be held, but not tough to get off of there each time. So using a little anti-static powder tool will do that. Okay, so let's come in with our first piece. I just pop it right into the placeholder, put the stencil down on it, and ink over it. You could use any inks you want. I decided to use Tim Holtz Distress inks today and Honey Bee Blending Brushes. You could use any inking tool you want to. It really doesn't matter. I'm putting down a heavy layer of color here. This is Peacock Feathers. And then I can lift up my stencil, take this piece out, and put the next piece in and repeat the process. So you can see how this saves a lot of time, creating a little placeholder like this and putting our stencil on a hinge. That way I don't have to line it up each time. This takes no thought. I can just pop in the paper, ink it up, and move on to the next one. Now for this one, I'm doing one color per stencil. I will show you later how you can change that up if you want to and do multiple colors. If you want to switch to a new color, all you have to do is wipe your stencil and tape clean and you're good to go. Now Lila joined me in on this and she inked a bunch of these too. So we made a lot of cards here together. You can see this is very easy even for an eight-year-old. And here she is using Picked Raspberry because that's definitely her favorite of the Distress Ink colors. Now on all of my cards, I use the same colors of Distress Ink. I use Picked Raspberry, Twisted Citron, Peacock Feathers, Blueprint Sketch, Mustard Seed, uh, Carved Pumpkin, and a little Seedless Preserves also along the way. Oh, and Abandoned Coral. So you can see I went through and did a bunch of pieces using that first stencil. Now I'm coming in with the next stencil. It's marked A2 in the corner. I'm once again lining up the etched line on the stencil with my white cardstock. 
putting that tape at the top to create a hinge, and now we're going to repeat the process. This time, instead of coming in with a different color ink, I'm coming in with the same color ink, Peacock Feathers here, and putting a light amount down. So check this out, you lift up the stencil and now you have a two-tone pinwheel. The first stencil I did heavy ink, the second I did light ink, and it gives you that two-tone look. So I went ahead and I did this with all of the panels I've created so far. So I have my first set of pinwheels, which are all two-tone. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with the third stencil. So I'm lining it up, putting the tape on top. Now this time I decided I wanted to do a couple different colors with the stencil. So there are four pinwheels on the stencil. I'm going to do two in Blueprint Sketch, and I wanted to show you how easy this is to do. So I inked up one with Blueprint Sketch. I'm going to mask off the other two that I want to leave for later and do another in pin, uh, the Blueprint Sketch. Now I could either go ahead and ink those other two, but I decided I wanted to do a few the same. So I'm going to leave those masks on lift out my cardstock and put the next one in. So you can do parts of a stencil each time. By creating this placeholder and the hinge on your stencil, it is super quick and easy to switch between panels and do it whatever way is easiest for you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and continue doing this. I did all two-tone for all of my pinwheels on these examples. So I did the first stencil with dark application of ink, and then the second stencil with a lighter application of the same ink. Okay, after I did the two pinwheels on the stencil with the blue ink, now I'm coming in with the Twisted Citron for the other two pinwheels. So you can build this up however you want. And after I'm done with this, I will demonstrate how to do a rainbow where each pinwheel is a different color. By the way, some people call these rosettes too, so you might hear me say that I keep accidentally almost saying rosette. So in case you hear me say that, I wanted to mention it's the same thing, these pinwheels or paper rosettes. Okay, after I finished the third stencil, I came in with the fourth stencil. I just wanted to show you where I'm headed here. You can see how I've got them all done, but my second set of pinwheels only has one of the colors. So I'm going to come in and do the light layer now with the fourth stencil. Now there is a guide that comes with this stencil set that explains how to do this super easy. You just need to go through the four different stencils and after you've inked them all, you have a beautiful rosette border. After inking over each of the four stencils, here are the panels I have. I have a great variety here. We're gonna turn many of these into cards today, but before I do so, I wanted to show you how to create a rainbow rosette border in case you want that look too, using the same products. So I'm just going to do this a little bit differently. If you just want to make one card at a time, there's no sense setting up that placeholder. All I did was tape my cardstock onto my desk and I have the first stencil here and I'm masking off one of the pinwheels. I inked that up with abandoned coral. Now I'm going to move my tape to mask off so that one more of the pinwheels is exposed. And this one I'm going to do seedless preserves. So I'm just going to do kind of a rainbow going across the cards. Each time I'm just moving my tape to mask off everything so that only one of the pinwheels is exposed to ink. So this is the first stencil. I'll go ahead and continue through with all the different colors on this one stencil. When I'm done, I can wipe the stencil clean and move on to the second stencil. By the way, notice that I'm kind of holding the stencil in place using the same piece of tape that I'm masking with. See how I have it hanging off the edge there? That helps to hold it in place. I'm also reusing all the tape that I had from before so that it doesn't go to waste. And I'm sorry my head gets in the way a lot here, but that's the easiest way to line these things up. So I lined up the second stencil by using the etch line on the stencil. And now I'm coming in with the same exact colors that I did before, but this time with a lighter application, which will end up giving us that two-tone look. So here I'm coming in with a lighter application of the Seedless Preserves, and that will end up being a two-tone purple rosette. So I'll just continue with all of the colors along here and finish up with that second stencil. So now we get to come in with the third stencil, which does the rosettes that are in between the ones we've already inked. So I just line it up, mask off so that I only have one of the rosettes exposed, and I'll do different colors with these two. So now I'll go through with the third stencil and ink up all of them with a heavy layer of ink each time a different color. 
And then I can come in with the fourth stencil, line that up and just do a light application of that color over each rosette. So there are two different ways that I share to use this. One is using the placeholder like I showed you before. And here is just creating one card at a time. And look at that beautiful rainbow of pinwheels that you get along your border. So no matter how you want to use these stencils, they're really easy and that's why I was excited to give them a try today. Okay, so let's start turning some of these backgrounds into cards. I'm gonna do a little bit of a different variation on each. Now remember I said that the four set stencil also comes with some additional stencil pieces, including a border stencil, or actually it's a border mask. Well, I thought I'd do that with this card here to create a soft blue halo around our pinwheels. So here is that border mask. It lines up perfectly with our stenciled border that we created. So I'm just going to line it up and just tape it in place. And I want a very soft blue border. So what I do is I start on the mask and pull the brush towards me, which creates a soft halo. You can apply a heavier amount of ink if you want. You could stamp over this, whatever you want. But I wanted that soft look. You can see that there. So having that border included is helpful in continuing the rest of the background if you want to. Here's what I did for this card. I just adhered it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. And I stamped happy birthday. Now you may notice there are some pinwheels that are popped up here that I created with some die cuts. So I will show you that a little bit later in this video, but it is a great way to kind of build some dimension to this. I also added some glitter to the center of the little pinwheels using tonic white blizzard nouveau drops. This you just squeeze out and it dries and gives a beautiful glittery shine. It's nice when you want something subtle. Now for the happy birthday sentiment, I used this balloon bouquet stamp set from the greetery. This creates gorgeous floral balloons, or you could skip the balloon and just do the little floral piece. Now I wanted to use this in this video, but I got carried away with the pinwheels. So I'll have to save it for another video, but I did want to show this to you. And this is where I got the happy birthday message and the welcome baby message that I used on this card. So for this one, I used the coordinating die for the pinwheel border to cut out the border and pop it on a white note card. I stamped welcome baby and then added some die cut silver glitter stars and also some silver gemstones to the center of the pinwheels. Okay, let's do another example. This one, I stepped it up a bit and I actually did two pinwheel borders on one card. So here's the coordinating die. I will show you the die set that it comes from a little bit later in this video. Now this cuts right along the border. I use this on my last card too. And I went ahead and cut these two that I inked exactly the same. So you can see I used the same colors of ink on each. And I can turn one to make it a border along the bottom. I wanted these to stand up and have dimension. I could use foam tape, but I found it easier just to use the same die to cut from white cardstock and then glue two white cardstock die cuts behind our inked border. And that way it has some dimension. It'll hold up through the mail nicely. So I glued two additional white die cut borders on the back of both of our inked borders. Now I'm going to put liquid adhesive on this and add it onto a note card. Now the note card that I have is four and a quarter by five and a half, and it's made from a soft pool cardstock. You can see how these will kind of overlap on the sides, but that works out just fine. And then we have room to put a sentiment in the middle, and I did drop my piece there with glue all over it, so I have glue all over my card, but that's okay because the adhesive dries clear. Okay, once I was done with that, I decided to add a sentiment to the center. This little celebrate die cut, I really like this. I'm gonna show you how I made a bunch of them. I used the Greetery Birthday Bloom stamp set and coordinating die set. This has such a unique look to it. So you have those words and the coordinating dies for them. Also you have all these little flower images that you can build up to create these beautiful little clusters of flowers. I plan to use those layout ideas there on the bottom that are included with the stamp set and create a bunch of one layer cards with them. I just think it's beautiful. But for today's video, I'm just going to use the sentiments and the coordinating dies. Now I thought I'd show you how I mass die cut and stamped a bunch of these sentiments. So I have this organize more organizer here. I'm not sure what it's intended for, but I use it to sort out my die cuts. 
I like to go ahead and die cut a bunch of die cuts from white cardstock and then stamp on them afterwards. You could do it either way, but when you're mass producing, I think it's better to die cut first than stamp. So you'll see I have some pinwheels there that I'll use later, but right now I'm just using the word die cuts. Now I kept all of these dies attached just because it was easier to work with, but you cut them, could cut them apart if you wanted to. Now it's time to stamp on the die cuts. I die cut a bunch of the words. Now it's time to stamp on them. So what I did is I have my Misty stamping tool here. Any stamping tool would work. And I put the negative space of my die cuts into the Misty and I taped it in there. I also have some tape upside down behind each of the word die cuts to kind of hold it in place. Sorry my head gets in the way again. It's best to kind of get over it so you can line it up. And now I'm going to add the stamp. So I just take my stamp and I line it up with the die cut and close the door on the Misty. And I do that for each of the words. So this way I can stamp all of these words at once. So here I'm going to come in with a black ink, ink up all of the stamps, stamp them onto the die cuts. When I'm done, I can take each die cut out and put a new blank white die cut in. That way I can make a bunch of these sentiments at once for all the cards I created today and I'll have some leftovers that I can use on future cards. This is something that is a huge time saver for me. Okay, back to our card. I have my birthday sentiment ready here. I couldn't decide between birthday and celebrate, but check out how this die cut really works great with any orientation on this card. You could stamp happy above it and make a vertical card. You can do it horizontal. That's one of the nice things about having a sentiment that's die cut. It can land on your card anywhere you want. You don't need a smooth surface to stamp on. I ended up choosing the word celebrate and glued that right in the center of our card. I wanted to have a black cardstock border right along the top and bottom of our card. So I set up my T ruler along the edge of my card. Then I run my liquid adhesive right along the side of the T ruler. I push a thin piece of car black cardstock right up against the T ruler and press it down. That way I know my thin cardstock strips are straight on the card. And it's a great way for a little finishing border. Okay, so here's a look at the finished card. I did stamp let's right above the sentiment celebrate. And on the inside of the card, I stamped you. I also added some Lucy's Cards gemstones. Those are those pool color gemstones and blue gemstones to create a little bit of an embellishment and sparkle on the card. So on this card, again, I used two borders and I thought I'd do another example using two borders, but this time I just kind of offset them a bit. So the first border on the bottom there is blues and greens. The second border on the top that's popped up is pinks, oranges, and yellows. This is a great way to fill a card and make something that has a lot going on if you prefer that. I added a happy sentiment along with the stamped birthday and a few iridescent gemstones here and there. Because I mass produced all my inked borders first and die cut and stamped all my sentiments first, it's really quick to pull all these cards together in different designs. Here's another example that uses two borders on one card. For this, I used an older Greedery stamp set that I bought a long time ago and I'm excited to finally use it. This is the Thinking of You stamp set. Many different messages of thinking of you, sending caring thoughts. There's even birthday, get well, and sympathy on here. You can mix and match them to create many different sentiments for different occasions. So I white heat embossed thinking of you on a black cardstock strip. I also have my two borders here and I want the cardstock strip to go right where those two meet. Now I want my black sentiment strip here to have some dimension to it. So I have two additional cardstock strips that I'm gluing behind it. This will give it some strong dimension. You could use foam tape if you wanted to, but I find this is easier and gives better results. So I'm putting adhesive on the back of that and then I'll add it towards the bottom center of our card. I'm using my T-roller to make sure I get it straight because I am notorious for gluing it down straight on my own. The T-roller is definitely an inexpensive tool that has saved the day many times for me. Now I'm going to add two borders, one above and one below. You can see how I have some extra pieces there that I'll just cut off the side when I'm done. Now I did go back and cut two thin strips of gold glitter cardstock and glued those above and below the black sentiment strip just so it would stand out more. 
I also added some Trinity Stamps gold baubles to the background. Those are smooth gold embellishments that I feel work really great with these pinwheels, but you could use any type of embellishment you prefer. So this is another example of using two of the borders together for a different look. Okay, so when I originally bought these Pinwheel Party products, I thought it would be helpful to me because I need to make more birthday cards and be better about sending them out. But as I was making these, I discovered that you can use these pinwheels for lots of different celebrations. So I decided to break out another The Greetery stamp set that I've had for a long time and wanted to use. This is Comforting Commands. So it's a stamp set and I also uh, got the coordinating die set. Now notice the die isn't see-through, so it can be hard to line up. Here's the trick that I do. I use the die cut to create a negative space. And then I line up the negative space around our stamped message. And then I tape that in place take the die and pop it into that die cut opening. It pops in like a puzzle piece. Then I run all of that through my die cut machine. And then you can be sure that the die cuts perfectly around your stamped image. This works with regular die cuts too, by the way. This card came together very quickly. I just trimmed down one of my border background pieces, matted it with some orange cardstock and added it on a white note card. I added my sentiment right there in the center and also put some more gold baubles on it. I will be making a bunch more of this design. I had mentioned that I'm making cards for our sister church that's predominantly black, just giving a little bit of encouragement to each of their congregation members, and I thought this would be perfect. Okay, let's just finish out our examples using these inked borders. For this one, I just trimmed it down and added it to a peach note card and then added the happy birthday sentiment. So there's no dimension to this besides that birthday die cut in the center. If you wanted this to be perfectly smooth, you could have just stamped the birthday right onto the background. That's one of the nice things about those pinwheel stencils is you can make one layer cards very easily with it if you prefer. I just like to stack up a lot of dimension on my cards. Now one more using the pinwheel borders. This one's very simple. I just added the flat panel to a white note card and then added the Let's Party stacked die cut right on top, which I'll show you in a little bit. This time I used some yellow gemstones just to add a little bit of sparkle. Okay, now I remember how I mentioned there were additional little stencils and masks that came with the stencil set. Let me show you how you can use those to make a quick one layer card. So there are three little stencils like this one. So you can make individual pinwheels anywhere you want on your card. This is how I use them. I just put one down, inked it up heavily with a pink ink. Then I just take that same stencil and rotate it a little bit and line it up. See how you can just rotate it and line it up again and put a light layer of the same ink on top. These little stencils are handy when you just want to put a rosette here or there on your card. And it comes with these masks like this. So you don't have to cut your own mask. You just tape your little mask on top, take another stencil and you can overlap there, ink over that, and you won't end up with an overlapping mess. That little mask over the pink rosette allows you to give a fun layered look very quickly. So I think you can see why I was really excited when these products came out, this little mini collection, because there are so many different ways you can use them together. And I knew I had to buy them, and they sold out very quickly, by the way. And I talked to the greetery, and they just are getting a lot more in stock right now of these products. So I was really excited to be able to do a video and share it with you. So be sure to look below at the time this video goes up because I believe they're gonna have a sale on these products and you might wanna move quick because I bet they'll sell out quickly again. A lot of these companies are still struggling to get the products that they need since manufacturing's been delayed due to the pandemic. So just have some patience and these products are back in stock. Okay, to finish this off, I just stamped happy birthday directly on top of our pinwheels and added some little stamped stars. I put that on a pink note card and then added some of the glitter drops to the center of the pinwheels. So there is very little dimension to this card. You could see how this design would work great for one layer and you can make a bunch very quickly. Okay, now for my favorite part. This is how you create these individual pinwheels that you could put anywhere on your card. This is another brilliant product that is part of this collection. So I have these little stencils that you saw me just use. These also work with a die set that they released with this collection. 
So here's the die set. There is a stamp set that lines up with that Let's Party sentiment and has little additional images. I didn't buy that one, so I don't have that to show with you, show you, but I will put a little photo of it up here on the top right. And that goes with this all too. But in this die set, you have those three pinwheels and they line up perfect in size with these little stencils. Also, that's the border die that I used on some of my cards earlier and the Let's Party die that you have the shadow die for also. So these are all really well thought out how they go together, the stamp set, the die set, and the stencils. Okay, let me show you how I created a bunch of these pinwheel die cuts that you can add to your card wherever you want. So I have three negative space pieces taped onto my work surface, the large, small, and medium of the pinwheels. I popped in a white die cut onto each. I die cut a bunch of white ones earlier. You probably saw it in my little organizer. And now I'm going to take the little stencil for each of these pinwheels and line it up and put a piece of tape along the top to create a hinge, just like we did at the beginning of this video. I'll tape down the little mini stencil for each of the pinwheels. And now we can just ink up a bunch. So in this case, I'm going in first with picked raspberry and putting a heavy application down, and I'll do it to all three. So you can see how quickly you can make a bunch of these rosettes. Now, after I'm done, I'll just go ahead and lift up the stencil and take out the die cut. You could keep the die cut in and just rotate it one little turn in the opening and ink it up again with the lighter shade. But I went through and did all of the first application on all the die cuts first, whatever works best for you. But you can see how quick this method is. Another time-saving option that you can do is to use colored cardstock to start with or do a light inking over the entire die cut first, as you see me doing here. Then you put the stencil down and put a heavy application, and that'll give you that two-tone look. I don't find it's as crisp if, as if you did each of the applications separately, but it is a time-saving option that I wanted to mention to you. But for most of mine, I just did a heavy application of ink on the first turn. Okay, so now look at all of these pinwheels I have. You could leave them like this if you wanted to where they look kind of striped, but I'm going to go back and add the second. So I'm going to put my die cut back in place and line up my stencil again. Again, I could have let, left the stencil where it was and rotate the pinwheel one little turn and it would have worked also. Didn't think of that at the time. So that's why you see me lining this up again. So I'm lining up the stencil so the white area of my pinwheel is exposed. And this time I'm putting a light color of this, a light application of the same color. And that gives you that quick two-tone pinwheel. So think of all the different things you could do on these pinwheels. You could do one application, maybe heat embossed. So you have a gold and white striped pinwheel. You could do pink and yellow. You could do um, a, like a sparkle embossing paste over one of the layers. So many things you can do. I just went through and made a bunch of pinwheels. Some of them are two colors, most of them are one color, and look at this pile of goodness. Ah, oh, I love it. I'm so excited Lila and I made so many of these. I am going to save some of those for some cards Lila and I are going to do later, but we're going to use several of these for card examples here. And I have an interactive fun card that I'll share at the end. Here's my first example using these pinwheels. So I did kind of a slim line card. This is about eight and a half inches wide and three and a half inches tall. I really like doing this longer card design because you can be a little more creative. It's something different. So I did a rainbow of rosettes across the front and I glued some flat onto the card and some with some dimensional tape so they'd have dimension. I added the Let's Celebrate You sentiment below, and then some Trinity Stamp Silver Bobbles, just for a little bit more sparkle. Here's another very simple card that I did. I just added a few of the rosettes along with a Sending Caring Thoughts sentiment that's white heat embossed on black cardstock, and that's from that Thinking of You sentiment stamp set that I showed you earlier. So you can see how you could even create this card and leave the sentiment off and add any sentiment that you want to when a particular occasion pops up. Now this one's a little bit different because I used two color pinwheels. So you can see one pinwheel is teal and blue, one's green and teal, and one is yellow and pink. Very easy to do using the die cut and stencil together. It would be fun to do some of these in Christmas colors around the holidays. You could do red, white, and blue for 4th of July. Many ways to use it. 
Now notice that white die cut has a little pattern around the edge. That's from this The Greetery crimped frame die set. This is another one I bought a long time ago and I'm finally getting to use. I really like the detail that it adds. And I used it on this card too. Now this card is extra special because it's kind of interactive. When you shake the card, all of the pinwheels move. Let me show you how I did that. I have a large white crimped frame die cut and I've arranged some pinwheels on it, just laid them there and I'm taking a picture so I don't forget the orientation I chose. Now I'm going to make a mark on the white piece at the center of each pinwheel and I can remove the pinwheels. Now I'm going to take a small circle die cut and die cut around each of those little pen marks. So I just tape the circle die there, die cut it and move on to the next one. And I end up with a piece that has all of those little holes cut. Now I need to make my pinwheel solid in the center. See how there's a hole on the center of my pinwheels? I didn't want that hole there, so I put a little white die cut circle on the back of each of my pinwheels. Okay, now I need to die cut a few larger white circles. These circle die cuts need to be a bit bigger than the holes that you die cut in your background. At the center of this circle die cut, I'm putting a foam circle. I'll line it up behind one of the openings on my background and then put a pinwheel on top. So I'll do that again so you can see. I have a circle die cut slightly bigger than the holes on our background. I'm putting a foam dot right at the center of that larger circle and I'll lay my background over it so that the foam circle is popped up right in one of those openings. Now I can take one of my rosettes and put that right on top of the foam dot and now it has that room to move. So I'm going to do that with each of my rosettes. You could use a foam square here if you wanted to but the foam circle is perfect. So now I have my little pinwheels that can move and shake all over the front of this. Really fun to do, it just makes it a little more fun. Now I'm going to flip this over and on the back I'm going to put foam tape around our rosettes. Now here's the thing, you don't want your foam tape to interfere with those circles on the background moving. So you can see how I put the foam tape around the edge and then little pieces here and there. You don't want to interfere with the movement of those circles. So you don't want them close to those circles. So now I can take this and add it to the front of a note card. And you'll see how when you shake the card, the little pinwheels move and spin around. It's really fun to play with. And when you take it out of the envelope, you'll see the movement right away. So the person will know that they can shake it. Now to finish this off, I added a celebrate die cut and I thought it would be fun if it moved also. So I just glued it to the green pinwheel only. So when you shake it, it moves around and it just makes for a fun card. So you could use this with any die cuts that you may have, but the pinwheels are perfect because it goes with that fun party feel. So the good news now is I still have a lot of pieces left over. I have that rainbow border. I have tons of die cuts. We have the pinwheels, the sentiments. So I can go and continue to make more cards. I really get excited when there's products out there that make it easy to mass produce. That way I can make more cards and I can get more from the products that I invest in. So I hope this video was helpful to you. And if you want to check out more about the products I used or the sale that I mentioned, it is in my information below on YouTube, or you can head over to my blog. I thank you for sticking with me for a long video. I had some lighting issues. Sorry about that. I had the window open so I could watch the kids. But all in all, you can get more information below or over on my blog. And there are two related videos there in the center. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you again soon.